decisions that are made here tonight are recommendations. In order to see this through, you will need to attend the municipality's meeting. All right, we're going to move on. Uh, RAZ 2022-11. Um, and I will state for the record that Commissioner Steve Miller will recuse himself from this case. Mr. J.D. This is a request on a property currently zoned condition, uh, commercial in general with 11 other conditions. Those conditions are before you in your packets. The request tonight is to remove several of those conditions, uh, particularly those number four regarding a landscape berm on the eastern side of the property, number eight, the architectural design of the uh, development, number nine, the location of dumpsters on the property, and number 11, the light pollution on the property. Note that this property is depicted as part of a established residential character area on the comprehensive plan future land use map, and it is dry. You'll also note here the particular parcel in question for the proposed use as a Dairy Queen. You'll note the facility to the far left of this is a family dollar. That uh, development back in 2014 is what brought about most of these conditions. There's also a potential client already for the middle parcel of the property as well. You know, this is a view from 376 of the property. And again, if you're looking at the property from approximately the center of the uh, center of the property, looking to the southwest, where the residents in question that uh, elicited some of these concerns and conditions. Here being in the bottom right hand corner, looking back towards the west, towards the family dollar. Again, looking to the northeast toward the property, and then back up towards the property, looking back to the southeast towards the, again, the subject uh, uh, property that listed some of these conditions in 2014. Overall, staff finds the request consistent with the current growth trends in the area and with community goals and comprehensive plan. The TRC had no additional objectionable comments uh, to the request. So, I yeah. I'm, yeah. Conditions, did you say, Jay? Four, nine, and eleven. Four, four, eight, nine. Four, eight, nine, and eleven. Four regarding landscape berm. Eight regarding architectural design features of the building. Nine regarding the location of dumpsters, and eleven uh, light pollution. That's the biggest berm I've ever seen. <laughs> All right. Questions for staff. All right, let's open it up to the public. Is there anyone here tonight wishing to speak on behalf of this request? If you'll come forward, please. Thank you. 
submitted a site plan that I believe everyone has shows the tech of me. Sorry. I'm sorry, I just have to go up make sure that's the current site plan that you'll see. Um, this is a proposed site for uh, here. And that is the, the layout that the franchise is approved. They think that's the best use of the property. We don't think it can be done with a 60 foot firm constructed on that part since the width of the entire property is only 160 feet. So we're asking the group to rely on the fencing and planning of the Viburnum around the property instead of requiring the burn. The second item has to do with the percentage that would be required for doors and windows as close as 10 percent. Like I mentioned, this is a Dairy Queen. Um, the applicant would be a franchisee, and it would be restricted to what Dairy Queen would approve. And they can't use the franchise model for the Dairy Queen with that restriction. The juncture within 200 feet of the property line in this site plan. So we, we feel like we've, we've done that with planning with, with our burn around the site. So we we do that. Okay. All very reasonable. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Lundell? Uh, one quick thing. So I'm just curious, and I agree with you about the, the is there anything in play about the any kind of, and I haven't got to see this, but uh, any kind of fencing is going to go to help offset that buffer? Well, it, it kind of plays into your next application. <coughs> your applicant is willing to fix it, but we would prefer for the need for more buffer fencing on the adjoining, but the applicant would be willing to, to fence if that's what. I just, I just said if it's in a packet. I could like ask you quick to if it's in a packet. Yeah. It, it would be, it, it's not an objection to the question. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else here tonight wishing to speak on behalf of this request? All right, is there anyone wishing to speak <coughs> against this? Please come forward. Good evening. My name is Cheryl Oliver. I live at 53 to 66 Moss Oak Trail, Lake Park, in the Francis Lake subdivision. Um, I've been a homeowner in our neighborhood. Since 1977, I moved into my current house in 1992 after we transformed it from rental property into a permanent residence. So here we are, <laughs> fighting that age-old battle of commercial development versus neighborhood integrity. You have heard, I'm sure, every angle of argument from both sides. And while we could go into the weeds about why property owners and homeowners want to be uh, protected from commercial encroachment, I feel sure you already know the answer to that. We have many new residents, and we are seeing more improvements and more property pride than, than I can recall in, in all of my decades at Francis Lake. We fight to protect our investments, <clears throat> continue to create a wonderful place to live, and to ensure that our property values do not decline. Now, in 2014, <coughs> excuse me, when, I, when we fought this particular battle, the Lowndes County Commission wisely proposed rezoning with conditions. We were assured by our county commissioners that our beautiful, long-established neighborhood would be shielded from any commercial enterprise near our west entrance by that 54-foot wide berm designed to shield us from any business's rear exterior, which commonly is not as well tended as the front, and also from excessive noise and lights and other nuisances. Apparently, this new rezoning application calls for abolishment of the berm in lieu of a less restrictive barrier, <clears throat> such as a fence. Those collapse, as did the one that the nearby family dollar was left that way for over a year, 
and shrubs, which without um, care, expert care and sustained care, they shrivel and die, and therefore they do not always provide a reliable barrier, and it takes a lot of time. In closing, I have one question. What has changed since 2014? We, we need protection, just as much protection now as we did in 2014 and as we will in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Is there anyone else tonight? Please come forward, sir, and state your name and address. My name is Ed Wilkinson. I live at 5394 Moss Oak Trail. Very near the issue here. I came for the actually the second uh, property that's adjacent to this. But I want to make a brief comment about this is, is when you said, well, there's no use for this property. Just a few short months ago, it was two of the golf courses, uh, fairways and, and, and uh, yeah, areas over there, two holes in the golf course. They came in and just dug up and purpose these two uh, or even three uh, are over there at the dollar store uh, potential commercial things to come in. And, and yes, I'm, I'm opposed to it. I support everything uh, that she said. And because uh, it is intrusive in the Francis Lake you know, subdivision area, uh, this area is a former part of the golf course. And uh, so I uh, saw so all the have to say on this, and I have. No comments more so that I came prepared for uh, about the, this other three plots. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Wendell Stockton. I'm from 5390 Moss Oak Trail. I'm directly across from the property in question. And I, like Ms. Wilkinson, came for the next section primarily. But I will say that um, when I look out my front door, when I moved there seven years ago, it was very residential and very beautiful. And now everything is starting to be very commercial. And nobody would want to see what I have to say when I look out my front door if it was your property. And as Mr. Willis said earlier, you know, you have a responsibility to help protect people that have bought the property with an expectation for it being maintained in a particular way. And uh, I just share the same sentiment with you for this day. Two minutes, ma'am. We've exhausted our time, so I'll turn it back over to the commissioners for discussion or questions. Commissioner Willis? I saw it on your face. <laughs> The four conditions that are being asked to remove uh, make this property uh, viable. Since this was, since these conditions were placed in 2014, though, some of this property has sold off, leaving this piece of the property. Am I correct? This is not the the original property as it was voted upon in 2014. No, you're correct. This property is about 4.8 acres all total back in 2014. <coughs> Right. Um, and this, this subdivided here section here was done in 2021. So perhaps the the berm and all of the conditions made sense when you had a bigger piece of land. Now we have a much smaller piece of land. Perhaps. Okay. Right. I, I don't believe anything's been built on that. So there's no burner. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. That, that had to be done. <clears throat> yes. Right. That was one of the conditions that that, um, I believe it was the eastern property line. Yeah. Yeah, eastern property line. Yeah. 350 Eastern property line. So, <coughs> excuse me, are we saying <coughs> that really this building is too large to be put on this piece of property? Well, no, I mean, no. if you look at it, you got to do parking here, thing. you got to be so much parking for a building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, if this particular piece of land is all that's left and you try to apply the same conditions, I don't know of anything that could be built there. three particular separate parcels currently zone residential immediately to the east of this property. They do abut this property. But they were not part of the original they were, they were not part of the original 4.7. They were considered back at that time in 09 and 14 when this case was originally heard. Um, residential cases that were considering going to commercial at that time, but they were not included in any of the rezoning packages. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, commissioners? All right, if not, I'll ask for a motion. Somebody. Madam Chair, regarding REZ 2022-11, a uh, request to remove conditions on 1.07 acres, specifically conditions 4, 8, 9, and 11. Uh, I move that we recommend approval. We have a motion to approve with removing the requested conditions. Do I have a second? Yes, ma'am. All right, we have a second by Commissioner Bailey. Any discussion on that motion? Madam Chair, and, and I, I think the, the biggest driver to me on this is what was it with condition we put it in place like we discussed, it was a condition of 4.28 acres. Now somebody I don't know who has bought this and subdivided it and it put this it's put some burden on this person trying to develop this piece of land. I mean and I agree that it puts a burden on the person trying to develop the land, but it also it puts a burden on the people that live there. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay, Commissioner. That, that's why that's why as Mr. Langdale uh, would his client be open to doing fencing and landscaping maybe either side of it to really dress it up mm -hmm. on that needs to be conditioned of what? Well, we have a, a motion uh, by Commissioner Hightower to approve it as it's presented with the removal of the four previous conditions. Do you want to amend or do you want to leave it as is? I do not. You'll leave it as is. All right. We have a motion to approve with the removal of the conditions as presented. We have a second. All those in favor of the motion to approve, please raise your right hand. Two, three, four, five. Okay. All those against, please raise your right hand. One, two, three, four. And we have one abstaining, and that motion will um, pass. Did you get that, Trini? I have the, I have three that abstained. Mr. No. Jefferson, Mr. Willis. No, 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 just yeah. Commissioner uh, Miller abstained. No, I'm, I'm sorry, objected. Objected. All right, if you objected, um, voted against, please raise your hand again for Trini. Thank you. You have that? All right. And that motion carries. Thank you. All right. We'll move on along. Um, and uh, stating for the record, Commissioner Miller will also recuse himself from REZ 2022-12. All 